I'd really love to save you a little bit of time, a little bit of money, and talk to you about my workflow and maybe even your new workflow when it comes to editing on external drives and even a mistake that I have made in my post-production efforts that I don't want you to make. So let's get into it. There you are, you beautiful humans. Welcome back to this channel. I am so excited to be here with you. You cannot, I, I mean, sir, you do not know how excited I am to be here with you. Now today, what I want to do is share a quick tip when it comes to your external hard drives and your post-production, whether you are into music, audio, you are into photos, or whether you're into filming and very large files, especially for myself where I am filming in 4K and I film a lot, I mean a ton. I like to get the A roll, I get the B roll, I get any roll that I can as long as it is gluten-free, but I gotta get it on here. Now as creatives, we know that hard drive space is at a premium. And we also know that editing or having any information on a spinning hard drive is just a non-starter. It's, it's, it's a non-starter. If you have a spinning hard drive, you don't have an SSD, whether internal or external, I'm sorry. Now what I have here are two hard drives, the SanDisk Extreme SSD, and this is one terabyte. And another one that I have is the Samsung T5, and I'll talk about mounting this, but it is mounted on my computer, still plugged in, it's an external drive. And the thing is, folks, I know that some of you are like, I like all my stuff internal, I don't wanna have dongles and things hanging off my computer and Velcro to my computer. Hey, listen, I'm not worried about being pretty, I'm just worried about getting the work done. Trying to keep as much off of your computer when it comes to all of your creative stuff is going to help keep that machine running because the more that you fill up that hard drive space, the harder it is to do those memory swaps that happen when it comes with the RAM and then it swaps and then it uses some of your hard drive space. And if you don't have really like a lot of hard drive space available, it starts to slow the computer down. So having an external drive like this, keeping it separate from the computer, it keeps all of that stuff freed up so that you can keep that computer as going as fast as possible while keeping all of your information on the external SSD. Now, both the SanDisk Extreme and the Samsung T5 do come with USB Type-C cables, but the SanDisk also comes with a C to Type-A, and the Samsung T5 also comes with a Type-A USB Type-A cable as well. And when we talk about the speed of our editing, we want things to be as fast as possible. And again, using this MacBook, knowing that I'm using Thunderbolt, and so the transfer speeds uh, are going to be pretty fast. Now, these are not gonna be as fast as your internal drives. That's not gonna happen. However, I think they are making some external drives that are about just as fast, but really the bottleneck comes into the transfer uh, through these cables. But what I want to tell you is that keeping everything separate and keeping the hard drives uh, fresh and clean of all of the clutter and all of the, the media and the data uh, is going to be helpful. So it still keeps my machine running fast. So I will actually sacrifice through that bottleneck. And what these are rated at is between like 540, 550 read and write speeds. I mean, real world here. I mean, you know, here's the thing, like you can do those speed tests and I've done them. I'm not really getting exactly what the manufacturer is saying that I'm supposed to get. However, I'm getting fairly close to it. And honestly, when it comes to comparing that to a spinning drive and like keeping things clean off of my computer, I will take that in a heartbeat because it's still fast enough when we talk about real world. And like I said, you can do speed tests all you want, but it's about the real world use. Now, when you're working with Teams, this is a huge benefit because if you have multiple SD cards like myself and you're shooting for a day, couple of days, maybe even a week at a time, and you need to offload data from these cards to this, and then eventually giving your information to an editor or someone else on your team, I would rather hand them something like this than giving them my SD cards, which I definitely need, because sometimes there's still space on there that you can still film on, or, or get some more information with, but I, I'd rather give somebody an external drive with all of the information on it so that they can start getting into their post-production and their workflow and organizing and even starting to work on these. Now, of course, as I showed you earlier, I do kind of just put these on my computer. It's not about looking pretty, it's just about the function of it. And I recommend personally, I know people use Velcro strips 
uh, to put on their laptops. I use the command strips and the medium strips. Uh, and what I really like about those is that, you know how Velcro, like when you keep like using it over and over again and eventually like it just gets like really fuzzy and dingy and it, and it doesn't hold what it's supposed to hold. I mean, that takes a lot of like off and on and, and certainly, yeah, it's kind of the same concept here. But what I really do like about these is that there's also, they're, they're easy to just pull off and you know, if you just wanna pull it off the drive, you're not gonna leave any residue, uh, oftentimes like those Velcro strips. Now let me bring you into my workflow and then also talk to you about a mistake that I've been making for a while that I don't want you to make. So let's talk about the workflow and then I'll talk about the mistake that's also gonna help you save a ton of space. Now we've got Final Cut open here. We're gonna create a new library and we're gonna make sure that we're creating that library in the external drive. So going down to the Samsung T5, and then what we're then gonna do is, you see we have all of that information, all of that media, we'll create a name for the, the library. And what where that library is going to exist is on this drive, because this is what we're working on and this is where we want everything to be. So as you'll see, we've got the T5 as where we're editing, and that's our storage location. Everything, the media is in the library, the motion content is in motion templates and that is in the uh, drive of the computer and the backups are actually in the computer as well. So we've got a backup on the hard drive of the computer. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to import this media. So you see we have all of this that we're gonna be importing and you'll also see that we want to leave the files in place. So we wanna leave all of that in place on that hard drive. We don't wanna put it on the internal of the computer. And then we're gonna bring that all in. So everything is going to exist on this external drive. You've got your library, the original media, and then you still have a backup on your internal hard drive of your computer, but it's not the original media. All of that is, it exists here, but it's just the workflow, the backup workflow. If you need, for some reason, something crashes and you need to go to the backup, that'll happen on the internal hard drive of the computer. So if you need to go back to that, but it'll still try to pull the information from this external drive. Now, the biggest thing, the dessert here, the finale, when it comes to a mistake that I've been making, I pride myself on labeling all of my files and I also try to save space on things that I'm not using or don't think I'll ever use, but the bundle. So in Final Cut Pro or any editing software, the bundle in Final Cut Pro, that is the largest file. So it exceeds even the original media uh, when it comes to all of the stuff that I've put on this hard drive. And what happens is, is that bundle has all of the color correction, the LUTs, the music, all of that rendering that's happening when you're working with it. Now with client files, I end up keeping everything. I make sure to not delete anything because if I need to go back to that, like if the client reaches back out for some reason, they want to pay us for some more work or to do something different or whatever, at least we have everything there. I just don't wanna take the chance of uh, deleting anything with the bundle. However, what you can do and what I used to do is just, I would render everything into like a, a .mov or an MP4, depending on the platform that I'm going with. And what was happening was is that I would delete the bundle afterward, and then I would lose my workflow. So what I wanna tell you to do is in Final Cut Pro, just in my own workflow, what you can do is you can actually go to the bundle, you can then show the package contents on that, and then when you go to the package contents, and for my setup, it's just like the date of the media files, go into that, and then you find the render folder, the render files folder. So that's all of the LUT, color correction, everything that's been happening there. And you can see that that folder has a lot of data, like it's taking up a lot of space. Now what you can do is go in and right click that, put that in the trash, you can delete that, and then you can go back and see that you still have that bundle. You still have that Final Cut Pro bundle. So even if you open that up, you'll see that your workflow is still there. The original media is still there. What's missing is the fact that it hasn't rendered and you'll see like those dots across Final Cut Pro to show you that, okay, I've got to render all of this stuff all over again. What questions can I help you with in making a buying decision, talking about your workflow? How can I help you so that you can elevate and scale your creative endeavor? Go out there, do those things that matter. You keep rocking the faces. I'm gonna keep creating here and out there and bringing it back to this channel. And until next time, I hope that you're going out there and crushing it and doing great things. 
and I can't wait to see you right back here on the next one.